I'm pleased to welcome to our program today uh, two guests, uh, Yamile Marti, a uh, PhD, who's an associate professor of professional practice at the School of Social Work. Hi, Yamile. Hi, thank you for inviting us, Richard. Thanks for being here. And also, Anna Balakrishnan, uh, who is uh, an adjunct lecturer at the School of Social Work, um, also project coordinator for the course that we're going to be talking about in just a little bit, um, focusing on just this whole uh, issue of professional development as part of your social work training. Um, I just should note that Anna is our most recent alum of the School of Social Work, and uh, it's wonderful to have her back here. And uh, maybe, you know, sort of to get the ball rolling, um, Anna, you could uh, give us a little bit about, uh, you know, your background, how you got into uh, social work and, you know, where it's taken you um, today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me and, and hello to everybody who's joining us from Facebook. Um, so let's see where to start. I, uh, I think I got into social work probably pretty early on without even really knowing it. Um, I think I, I grew up in a community where, where service to others was always sort of part of my world and, and guided by my mom. So I know that that's sort of been a guiding force throughout everything. But when it really defined itself as social work in my life is when um, I started doing work in the Dominican Republic very, very early on um, and really just fell in love with community-based work and started to ask questions like, okay, what does impact really mean? And what does it mean to join with a community and, and start to talk with them about how, how they're defining and experiencing the issues that they're facing in their lives and how can we work together to develop solutions to overcome them and just absolutely fell in love with that process. And that, that brought me to the Columbia School of Social Work and, and specifically the AGPP, which is Advanced Generalist Practice and Programming Track, which is really holistic social work, right? And one of the things that you're able to do in that track is to really start that needs and assets uh, assessment process and program development and, and really discover what it means to work with the community in those ways. Um, so that's what I did. Um, and I, I focused really specifically zooming in on programmatic work there. Um, and I, my area of practice was international social welfare and services to immigrants and refugees. Um, so after I graduated, um, I worked in a variety of different settings um, that's really sort of allowed me to hone in on these skills. I've worked in school systems and foundations and, and multiple NGOs. Um, and now I'm working, I work at the hospital for special surgery. I'm the social work coordinator for Latinx outreach. Um, and what we're doing is we're designing a program that's specifically tailored to Latinx rheumatoid arthritis patients. Um, so the program is culturally tailored, specific to rheumatoid arthritis and really is informed from that patient perspective. So right now we're doing research with uh, structured interviews with patients um, to make sure that the patient voices are really involved in the development of the program from the ground up. Um, and I actually also continue the work in the Dominican Republic as well. And I work with a, an NGO that's registered in the Dominican Republic focusing on community development work. Mm. Um, so that's, that's how I got here and also <laughs> joined, uh, joined the, the CSSW team again as uh, adjunct faculty. So get to work closely with Dr. Marty, which is obviously a joy um, in, in, in program development and proposal development. Yeah, I, I think one of the great things about being uh, a CSSW graduate is that, you know, we never really leave. <laughs> we always maintain a connection some way sure. or another, right? You know, and and it's and it's and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to have you here uh, today, uh, uh, Yamile, um, You've been on the program before, so maybe our audience uh, is a little familiar with your story, but if you don't mind just sort of giving us uh, uh, a little bit of, a, of that overview, because you've got a background in education, we're going to be talking yeah. about social work education. So yeah, what, what was it that brought you to the School of Social Work? And you did your PhD, correct? At, at, yeah, at, at our school, school and at my MSW as well. So as well. Oh. similar to Anna, I grew up in a household where service was a, a major part and component of our daily lives and, and sort of how we practice our, our, our lives. And so that inspired the social work path from an early age and knew when I finished college that I wanted to be a social worker and in my MSW many years ago there and then practiced within families and children and then decided to do a master's in psychology of education so really looking at, at a way in which when you do curriculum and you do work you instill sort of information and knowledge throughout the work that you do um, right there next door at teacher's college and then came back to the school of social work to do my doctorate in clinical social work as well. 
-hmm. and now being at the school for about seven years um, as as a teacher. So happy to be at, at home because it's both the place that trained me and now the place that I work. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, sort of taking this background, sort of, uh, you know, your interest or your expertise in education and, and developing um, a new course, correct, um, for first year students entering the School of Social Work to prepare them for um, going out into the field and working uh, in their practicum as uh, graduate social work interns. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious to hear more about how this project or how this course came to be uh, proposed and developed. And I understand that it is funded by a grant from the Office of the Provost um, at Columbia University. So congratulations for that. I'm just double checking um, and also want to remind people that uh, uh, we do reserve the last 10 minutes. I always forget this. We <laughs> reserve the last 10 minutes for Q&A. Um, but if you've got questions, please type them into the chat box and we can take a look and hopefully integrate them into the conversation sooner rather than later in the program. Um, and also I note that uh, um, our a uh, viewer from France said, no, it's not snowing here. So, <laughs> so we know that it's not snowing in France. All right then. Um, so yeah, uh, let, me, let me ask you, Emile. Um, so how did, how did this uh, course come about? So it was, uh, I think, a threefold idea. Uh, first came from my own experience as an MSW student. Um, I usually worked in the past with families and children. And my first year uh, in my internship, I was placed at Bellevue Hospital at the Methone Clinic with a population of mostly older adults and pregnant women who I never really had an experience working with. And so my first day, I, I felt very insecure um, and very afraid of doing damage in my work, even if I had good intentions, because I didn't feel prepared. And so I think even if we, we prepare these students through classes, a little bit of a, a support system on things that they might encounter in the field is something that I, I would have benefited from many years ago. Secondly, just hearing our students confront many issues in the first two or three weeks of placement and, and trying to work through them in class with them. I, I know that they feel that they need a little bit more of information and some um, not only theoretical and practical uh, knowledge, but just hands on what I do if this happens in field. And then thirdly, I think it's, um, you know, we are one of the professional schools that throws our students in. Um, into work, which is great and a great way of learning to be right there in the in the trenches. But part of it is, you know, law school, you wait until your third year to be in a clinic, medical school, you wait, wait until a couple of years to be seeing patients. And I feel like we need sort of support of, of our students to be able to give the best work available and possible that they can. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it according to CSWE, um, you know, field education is regarded as the signature pedagogy of our um, discipline and profession. And, you know, but unlike other professions, uh, it's, it's sort of, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of put into the middle of things and, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's often it feels like a sink or swim. So, um, <laughs> You know, uh, but you know, most of us uh, do do manage. And and Anna, I mean, your your experience, um, you know, as a student going out into the field for the first time, what was that like for you? I remember it well. Um, so it it wasn't too long ago, right? And I think that it's such a formative time um, for all of us as social workers and social work students. Um, and I I am thinking back to that time, and you know, you, you come into school, and for me, I I had just moved to New York City too, probably like a week or two before. Um, and you go to orientation and you start your classes and you're meeting your colleagues and you're just, you're getting all of this wonderful rich information about theories and practice and ethics and principles and all of these things. And you're excited and you're passionate and you're ready to work really hard because you signed up for this program. Um, and I just remember as field was getting closer and closer and I had all of this information sort of swirling around, there was also this element of, ah, okay, this is fine. Um, and, and really there's, there's so much room, I think, for us to really explore that space of we are talking about these, these really, really critical components of social work practice and, and taking students you know, and, and having them be thrown into this environment, which is such a really wonderful way of learning right through that action and through that practice. But there's really room to be diving in a little bit further to these discussions. And like Professor Marty said, 
um, building on this information that they're getting in other spaces, but also having having an opportunity to really practice it and, and dive into what that what that means in moments and in conversations and um, and kind of have that workshop time too. Yeah, absolutely. So so let's dive in. Um, <laughs> you really, I mean, uh, what 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 can we do to better prepare? Um, our students for this really formative experience. Uh, you know, people, when they come back to the school, um, yeah, they, they'll remember some of their professors, certainly like you, um, and, and maybe you know, some of the courses they actually <laughs> took, but they always remember their placements, right? Yeah. What that was like and so on. So, so what can we do? How can we better prepare them? So the idea of this course, it's, it's first of all, it's going to be a pilot because we want to make sure that we um, see how students react to it and areas in which we can improve and make it even better. So we will select randomly a group of students from the first year course um, and the first year class to come into the course. And the idea would be to talk about three main, uh, four main topics, one of which is uh, professionalism, self-awareness is the second one, ethics, and then we're going to talk about power, privilege, and oppression and race through examples and real scenarios that happen in the field. And this could be everything from, you know, we have students coming from all over the United States and the world. And the first day in placement, they're asked to deal with entitlements and they might not know the law of the state of New York or, or the area in which they are, what are, are people eligible for or not. So talking about how to gather that information and be better prepared to confront those types of like typical questions in field. But also dealing with issues of, for example, um, you know, a supervisor who, who makes a comment that is racist or oppressive towards either a client or clientele or themselves. And so how do you raise your voice? How do you advocate for the client? What is the channel in which to report a, a case of something that you see that it's wrong or, or unjust in the process of your practice? Um, so we really want to do sort of a skills lab in the sense of like navigating through case examples and vignettes that come from the experience of our alums and our students. So they're truthful and real to, to what's happening in the field. Okay, so um, so you're envisioning a, a two week course for this? And, so and it would be the first two weeks of school, uh, which they don't have placement. We will substitute the days that they would be in placement with this course. Um, and then we will have sort of tune up sessions to navigate how things are going in November once they have a couple of months in the field. And then in the spring semester, once they have the whole First semester in the field. So we don't we want to kind of continue the conversation and gauge where people are at in terms of their learning and their skill sets so that we can help them and support them in that process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the emphasis is on skills or um, you know the, uh, what, what do you want them to sort of get out of that? I, and because I know, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, how anxious um, you know, students are. So there's, there's that element, but, you know, sort of building confidence through, through skill development and things like that. Is that, that what you're focused so on? So it, it's a combination. I think knowledge is also going to be part of it. We want to bring speakers that can talk about this topic. So professionalism, what does ethics look like? We, we, we uh, you know, embody a code of ethics for the, National Association of Social Workers that we believe in and we strongly talk about it in all of our courses. But what does that mean in practice to, to do work ethically? And so we want to bring speakers that also share that knowledge of what they have experienced and what they know, and then and then talk about how do you apply it to your work and also your own identity. So each of our students is a unique being with multiple identities. And so how do they bring that into the work that they, they are doing and how the, does that affect or not or enhance the work that they're doing. So yeah, I think that's an important conversation to have. And I think our students come from very different backgrounds. We have students who have got a, a bachelor's in social work. We have students that this is a second career. We have students that have never worked in the field. And so the idea is to make a course that, that accommodates that variety within our student body as well. Okay. Um you know, there's a lot of content for us to unpack here, but I, I want to go back to Anna and, and um, you know, and if you want to comment on, on the content of, of this uh, pilot course, uh, that, that's great. But I'm, I'm, I'm also wondering about how you see your role, right? Um, your involvement with this, with this uh, project um, and, and, and not so much the content, but what, 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 what does this uh, course development look like from, from your perspective? 
Yeah, absolutely. I love that question because I think it, it also kind of goes back to what I was talking about in the beginning with engaging with the community, right? And now we're talking about a community of students in a school. Um, and so I think what we're both really looking forward to is to listening and to asking lots of questions of students and field placements and field directors and faculty and really getting a big picture for what, what this looks like and what do students need? Um, and I think, you know, as we said in the beginning, we're so early on in this process that I think we're in that kind of exciting time um, of having the questions. We, we know some of the questions we want to ask, but also know that through this process, I think we all know um, in our experience here that more questions come up. You don't even know all the questions that you're going to ask. So um, I think really engaging, um, engaging with students, engaging with faculty and field directors, I think, um, Professor Marty will we'll also talk about uh, our collaborative board. We wanna be establishing a collaborative board that's really gonna be helping guide the, the development of this pilot course, um, which will be uh, will consist of faculty and field directors and current students and alumni. And that'll really help the guide the process of, of the development of this course. Mm. Yeah, it, it certainly, um, you know, this idea of a board sounds great and, and the collaborative nature of it Right in a way, I think we've we've talked about this before, but uh, hopefully um, embodying uh, just certain social work principles, right, of our about our practice. Is that correct, Yamile? So we want, yeah, we wanted to to sort of do in this project in in the way that we set it up, the the ethical and professional social work practice. We're mimicking that in the even in, even in the in the planning process of this. So so this comes from the students in the sense of. You know, they have told us that they need something to feel more uh, strongly about their skill set when they go into the field. And through that process and that data, we are trying to get information from sources that work with students, from the supervisors that are in the field, our alums that have the experience of sort of looking at it from a, a little bit of a distance, like, like Anna's experience, and then students who are right now in the field and dealing with it with, for example, having to change to Zoom and telehealth to be able to do their, their work and what does that mean in terms of their capacity to feel that they can do their work and, and also ethically. And so what we're trying to do with this collaborative board is gain information from different viewpoints and create a curriculum from those viewpoints that sort of brings all the aspects that students experience in the field and, and also have an accountability um, by, by having the board of like checking in and did we accomplish what we said we were going to do we also want to establish uh, an evaluation process from the beginning. Um, this is something that's going to be done um, in, in the whole process. So evaluating not only how we did the, the whole class and the curriculum, but also how students are feeling in terms of their capabilities and their skill set. So we're trying to, to mimic what we teach in the process of doing the, the project. No, I, I, I think it's wonderful. It's, it's so often... Um you know, in, in school, right, in, in education, we, we focus on evaluating, um, you know, learning outcomes, right, and, and focus on that. Um, but being accountable to a whole community, right, um, really sort of uh, broadens the scope of, of what you're trying to achieve. Um, we've got so many questions here. So <laughs> I, I think maybe we better start uh, 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 fielding them um, and, and uh, continue from there. The first question, how does this course uh, work hand in hand with the first year course in motivational interviewing? Yeah, so um, it's just the general question. There's, there are other uh, things that students go through, um, the um, professional development and self-awareness workshop. Yeah. There's a uh, um, um, preparation for the profession uh, workshop. There are a number of things, and plus they take a motivational interviewing lab. And so, so how does this fit in? Is it is it yeah. something? It, it's going to be an, an addition to, and and we are taking all of the information from both orientation, um, all all these segments of things students get prior to coming on orientation week, and also their first year classes like power, privilege, and oppression, decolonization of social work into consideration and we're reviewing that curriculum in building ours. So we don't wanna be repetitive, but we also wanna highlight areas of those curriculums which are integral to the practice of social work. Um, and so we're reviewing everything that has been um, very nicely given to us by our colleagues. And for, that's part of the conversation that the collaborative board will have. How are we gonna make this distinct, but also highlighting the areas that need to be continually talked about in the work that we do. And the MI lab, um, having been an instructor of it, it's, an, it's a really a skills lab. You're learning how to do motivational interviewing with your clients. 
you're learning the language of motivational interviewing, which you could select to use in some aspects of your practice or do the entirety of the intervention. Um, and so this, we certainly want students to have that and that's very useful. I, I find myself doing motivational interviewing work, even if it's not in a clinical setting, just in, in, in working with other people. But this is much more uh, broader in the sense of the target areas that we want to talk about than MI. So it's, it's really a different course in that sense. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, I guess, kind of a follow-up. Uh, somebody asked, will uh, new students be able to select this course? How are you going to choose who takes the pilot? Random selection, literally okay. out of a bag. We're going to probably um, cap the, the amount of students, uh, about 100 students, and we're just going to do random selection um, because we really want to test it with, with a, not a selected group of people, but with a hopefully a, a, a sample of students that represents the incoming class. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, uh, next question. I think this is the big question for a lot of uh, our viewers. Um, does the course or will the course address racism on the institutional level? And, and I don't know if that the institution is the School of Social Work or the agencies or uh, maybe both. Right. So um, so this this area of power, race, oppression and privilege, um, which, yes, is is addressed in other parts of the curriculum at the School of Social social work. And so, so what, what's going to be, I think, uh, you know, your particular take uh, through this, this pilot course? So I think it's going to be all of it. Um, I don't think we want to shy away from, from having to deal with the reality of, of oppression and the institutional racism and the structures of oppression that our clients and ourselves deal with on a regular basis. Um, so we, we don't want to shy away from any of it. Um, our students also deal with, with uh, agencies and hospitals and schools, et cetera, where they deal with not only the clientele, the group of people that they're serving, but then, you know, the Department of Education or the health department and, and what the rules have to do with the realities of the clients that we see. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about those things as well, how policy is made and how policy made sometimes is not made well informed by the realities of our clients and, and our, our communities. So I, I, it will cover all of that. Okay, so the third question or another question that somebody asks, um, what are the top ethical dilemmas uh, social work students, social workers typically face? Um, could you give us some specific examples? So I don't know if you know there's um, uh, a story that you've heard, Yumile, or uh, something that you've experienced, or you, Anna? Um, that maybe can, can sort of demonstrate the complexity, the ethical and, 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 and clinical complexity, certainly, of trying to manage these kinds of difficult conversations. Um, does, does something come to your mind um, right now? Or? Anna, you, you want to... I don't want to speak all the time, but okay. I have a couple of <laughs> ideas, but go, go if you have some. Well, I, I'm curious, Anna, um, you know, working with doing um, Latinx outreach, for example, um, how, how, might, how might this be, be relevant to the, the kind of, of work that you're doing? Very, very much so. And I yeah. so appreciate that question, right? Because I think that's, that's really one of the big questions. And um, I think that it's important to understand, as we all do, how much all of these different things intersect. Right, and I think this kind of piggybacks on what we were saying um, before in terms of how we're integrating power, race, oppression, and privilege. And you know, if what we want to talk about with this course are issues of ethics and self-awareness and power, race, oppression, and privilege, and professionalism, all of these things go together, right? So you're learning all of these different things, but what we really want to explore in in this course is okay, you have all of these concepts. Well, what happens when you're sitting at your desk or what happens when you're doing that home visit? And what do you say? What do you do? How do you act? And, and all of the things that go into that decision and how much who you are goes into that decision. Um, and I think these things come up so much in my work. I mean, I, I identify as a white woman, right? And I'm working in Latinx communities and that's huge. And that's a very big thing to be acknowledging. And it's something that we talk about as a team all the time and making sure that we're incorporating in very meaningful ways, the voice of the community that we're working with. But that right there, we could just zoom in on that moment of what it means to be a white woman as somebody who's, who's largely benefited from the way that society is set up and what that means to be working in underserved communities. Right. And I know that we could have we're coming up on time, but we could talk for a very long time just about that specific piece. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's a 
that's really an area that we all as practitioners need to make sure that we're, we're looking at and recognizing our own, our own implicit bias and, and what our responsibility um, in those spaces are because that, that carries with us absolutely everywhere and, and who you are as an individual, your own kind of self and what you bring with you into a room is going to come with you into, into every single space. So that was a very broad answer to the question. So um, Professor Marty, if you want to jump in with any additional examples. Yeah, I'll share, you know, in my own practice, I work with youth and families and, and for example, the ethical dilemma of giving a voice to young children or youth when they're under age and their parents can make decisions for them. How do you navigate empowering the young adult or the young child when they are sort of under the wing of the decisions of an adult um, that it's making them for them? Um, issues of how do you, um, we know we have dealt with uh, a case of, of clients who have sort of fallen in love or have a special affection towards a social worker. How do you deal with boundary orientation and making sure that you set boundaries to protect yourself and also protect the person that you're working with? So I think, you know, ethics is a very broad topic and we want to bring it up in the multiple ways that it shows up. But I, and I think, as Anna said, the, the beauty of the course is that these are not four separate subjects. These are four intertwined subjects that are always uh, present in the work that we do. So we don't see, see, see them as silos, but we see them as things that have to be interconnected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a couple of, um, you know, sort of uh, affirmative comments in the chat box. And, and I think that, uh, um, yeah, I, I just want to uh, note uh, that uh, yeah, someone wrote, after having already done a one week retreat for preparing myself for a social mission, I've understood the importance of getting ready for social work. Thank you for your work, it's crucial for us. Um, somebody else wrote, my applied practice was at an assisted living facility and I wasn't prepared to witness and respond to death. Having a strong support system at the placement as well as through the faculty definitely allowed me to grow from the experience and maybe a better social worker. Um, this pilot course sounds amazing. Um, I want to, yeah, uh, so, so, yeah, question, how many hours is the course? Uh, do you have a, a set number? So right now, what we're thinking is um, it's going to be six days during the beginning of the semester, and one day in November, and another day in March or February, uh, but we're really in the beginning process of scheduling everything and figuring out the structure of the course, so that might be shifted and changed. And the idea is that we, if we, in our evaluation, we sort of prove that this is something that students need, want, and it's helpful, we ideally want to propose that the school has a pretty entire incoming class and that we probably can produce something similar for the second year students to maintain that support in their professional development in the field as well. So it's a, it's a project that has sort of a scope of a pilot right now with the idea that if it goes well, we can expand it and make it bigger. Okay, uh, it sounds wonderful. I don't know if I have time really to to manage these the, the final question because it's such a big one about you know sort of uh, why does oppression exist in our in our field and uh, uh, what have ha, have you seen um of this in in the social work and uh, maybe i mean if we if we have time to just get um some of your com comments really quick so I, I remember a student, international student, had come from China. Um, she was placed in a an agency in Chinatown, um, working with the, uh, I guess, Cantonese speaking clients. But she spoke Mandarin. But you know, the the agency preferred to have somebody um, with a Chinese background because clients felt more comfortable. So we had placed her there. And I, I re remember there was a, a situation that arose where um, her supervisor was talking about the different clients that they serve. And, you know, depending on where they came from, you know, mainland China versus Hong Kong versus, and, and sort of giving a, a little bit of a kind of description, you know, well, these people like that. And, and, and the student really found that um, offensive, um, you know, uh, and, and the supervisor, you know, was, was a field instructor and, and so on. So a situation like that, I mean, does that sort of exemplify some of the, you know, this is the complexities of, 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 of the work that our students are sort of faced with? And, and yeah, so w w what should she have done or what could she have done in that situation? What would you advise? Yeah. And I also think the structures of, for example, being a student and not an employee and, and having a supervisor and your grade depending on sort of your performance and that that in itself is oppressive because you feel you don't have a voice and that you're not a participant in the conversation. One of the things that I think is really important is the self-awareness piece of being 
securing yourself and your abilities as a social worker to speak up when you see injustices, to be able to do it in a manner that is conduct conducive to change rather than only criticism. And so I think part of what we want to work with our students is giving them that voice and that sense of security that they should be able to say, look, I'm not partaking in a meeting where we are sort of selecting who is who based on a, on a, on a stereotype. And mm. so I think that's an important component of the course that we really want to emphasize. That, and, and it's pervasive in all aspects of our life to the question of, of our audience, you know, where, where do you see it and why? I, I think, you know, we have to go back to history in a way and see how our nation, our world has, you know, continued this patterns of oppression and, and, and structural racism that are not, you know, not, some are hidden and some are very obvious and evident. And so we want to bring both out and also the idea of how you as a social worker have power yourself and might be somebody that without knowing it or intention are making the voice of somebody smaller because you are having those power dynamics. So it's also from the standpoint of us as, as practitioners and professionals as well. Mm. So, so your course will sort of create a space where these discussions, these, these kinds of things can, can occur, but also not just talk about it, but do something about it. I mean, what is a way to take effective action, right? To address these issues in the larger community uh, and, and, and to create a larger community of accountability for, exactly. for this practice. It sounds wonderful. Um, I, there's there's uh, one last question and I'll just throw it out here. Um, any recommendations for reading material outside of the course on the topics of ethics and preparing for field experience? I don't, I don't know if you have something right off the top of your head or if we can post it later on, but I just wanted to uh, note that people are interested in, in yeah. following up. I, I will definitely share some materials later on, but, but I think a lot of the work that's been done in articles related to supervision and the dynamic between supervisor and student and some of the issues that come up are really helpful in thinking about what happens in the field and also qualitative um, work of just narrative stories of the stories of social workers in their work and essential workers. A great example is what we're going through right now with COVID-19 and the role of social workers is so crucial in the support of family systems in healthcare, but sort of also how are they processing the amount of you know, insurmountable loss that they have experienced in our field. So I think there's a lot of new um, literature that is coming out in sort of the experience of social workers and, and their role in the field that will be very beneficial to our course. And I'll, I'll be happy to share with, with, with the audience in a later post. Okay, thank you. And uh, um, yeah, Anna, you too. If there's anything that you want to share with our audience, we can certainly, we can certainly uh, post that to the website uh, later on. Okay. Um, so, just thank you again um, to our guests, Anna Balakrishnan and uh, Yamile uh, Marti Haydar. Um, thanks for being on Social Impact Live today. Thank you, Richard. Thank Thanks you so everyone. much. All right. Uh, that concludes our program for this week. Um, next week, uh, we've got uh, two guests again, uh, Anandita Dasgupta and Don Goddard Eckrich, um, who are going to be here to talk about uh, vaccine uh, distribution research um, and uh, particularly how it affects women of color. So looking forward to seeing everybody back then. Uh, until then, uh, take care. See you.